Hi and welcome back to uh, SallyHughesBeauty.com. Thanks for watching. I'm in the bathroom again. You would not believe whose bathroom I am in. It's Drew Barrymore. Um, we are in her London hotel in her personal bathroom and she's got loads of amazing stuff out and she's here to launch Flower Beauty which is her very own beauty range launching soon so we're going to talk about that and loads of other stuff. See you in a sec. I'm drinking mimosas with Drew Barrymore, nice and normal for you. And um, hey, hi. So, I'm so excited to do this with you, by the way. Thank I'm you for having excited. me on your channel. I'm super excited. Now, uh, we always say no to people who want to do an in the bathroom with video in a hotel. And the reason I always say no is because it's like super like stiff and spartan, and then they've got like three lovely bottles of something on yeah. the sink. And we got here today, <laughs> we got here today, and not only was there loads of stuff around, but you were like, anything, yeah. anything, well, shoot it. Also, this is a, quite an extraordinary bathroom. I mean, you've got like the table with the accessories, and this is far fancier than my actual bathroom and closet at home. In fact, I just moved into an apartment that doesn't have a bathtub. Oh. Makes me miss baths so much. My kids have a bathtub. But it's like a kid-sized bathtub, yeah. so if I take a bath, I'm like yeah. scrunched up and it doesn't feel relaxing. But this is what my bathroom would look like. All my stuff, all my shit's always splayed everywhere. And I kind of like the chaos of it because it just reminds me of like what to grab. And I'm not type A, I'm not anal. I, my desk looks like somebody just had their way with it. And... Um, I think I like the clutter. It feels inspired and it just shows me all the stuff I'm working with or using and and what's missing, right? If you go to if you go to grab something and you think actually I don't have a product for that, you can go make it now or go and look for it. I I definitely do. And I always like saved makeup when I was a kid and I never knew why I would save it. Um and then that was so many years ago and I don't have that stuff anymore, but and labs would probably tell me it was all like defunct at this point, but I wish I had. Do you possibly remember the double ended Shiseido lipstick? Yes. That had the butter yes. on one end, yes. the matte on the other. Yes. It was in that maroon colored component. I know exactly what you mean. It was skinny and it was so inventive. And I've I made this other version of it. Um, which is like a mix and match, but it's still not the, the like gold standard of, and this is really great. And then- Because the problem is as well, it's not just losing the product, it's living up to the memory of the product at that time in your life. Well, right? also if you love a shade, you want it in two different formulas. Yeah. That was the ingeniousness of yeah. the whole product and no one's ever touched it since. So you're, I can tell that you just love product from looking around and we'll get back to what you have in here. But is that what prompted you to begin Flower, or did you just think, actually, I need a pension, my kids need a pension, or what, you know, what made you think, actually, I'm going to have my own brand? God, I swear, there are days where I feel like such an old hag that I wondered why I ever went into the beauty business, because you have to, like, present yourself, and some days you don't feel so presentational, yeah. Yeah. and you think, I, why acting? Why beauty? Why do I keep choosing these industries where it's like so ephemeral. about the yeah. way you look when that just isn't really who I am and I haven't done anything to my face. I'm trying to like embrace it. I ate salty foods last night. Um, yeah, you know, you, you look fully shit, You mentioned right? the word crisps. <laughs> she doesn't know shit. I had a bag of crisps last night for dinner. Um, with a, uh, a delicious, um, grapefruit vodka, I call it a pink greyhound. Like um, it. So good. With like a dried blood orange in it. It was really awesome. Um, so, you know, I just don't, I'm not one of those, you know, diet, drink all your no. water. No. I work out. I exercise. When it gets really far on the other spectrum, I'm like, rein it in. Yeah. And like get healthy again and then as soon as I get healthy I'm like I'm so bored give me the vino give me the pizza yeah give me the carbs give me the crisps and the vodka like I just I've never really been that person who sort of lives um, that perfectly physically virtuous life um, so I think I'm in the wrong businesses but that said the reason I got into the beauty business was 
saying it backwards in like an opposite linear fashion. I just finished my um, almost tenure at CoverGirl. And um, when I first met with them, they said, we'd love you to be a spokesmodel. And I went in and met with them and I said, you guys are gonna kill me because I'm here to meet with you to say, there's no way I can do this because I'm not a spokesmodel. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll never know how to be like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm such a geek and I just, I don't see myself like that. But I said, I love producing and I love storytelling and I like when things are emotional. And I am a girl who dances around in her closet and loves makeup and loves being a girl. And getting ready for the date it might sometimes be better than the date itself, and that's okay. Definitely. Right? It's often the best. Especially yes. if you've got girlfriends with you. Ugh. I mean, yeah. girlfriends, I'd trade them over a date any day of 100%. the week. 150,000 infinite million percent. So I said, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. But your easy, breezy, beautiful slogan so speaks <laughs> to me, and I would give anything to say it. But I just want to say it. Not as myself, because no one wants to aspire to girl in big underwear dancing around her closet with sweatpants. We need aspiration, mm -hmm. but I want reality, and I won't yeah. be able to do like on a motorcycle or like coming out of the jungle. So I was like, I wonder how I could ever do this with you guys in a more real, authentic to myself, but heightened, obviously, way. And they came back to me a year later and they said, do you want to run the campaigns? Like, do you want to be co-creative director? And I was like, now you're talking. And I was like, because oh, that's what you know how to do, right? You know how to produce. You know how produce. to produce. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The behind the scenes, which I think was always like my subconscious plan. So that when I was like, my tits were down to my toes and my chin was like grazing it, that I would have a backup plan of just being behind the camera which I like doing because I want to connect with people emotionally. Like girls are such emotional creatures. I don't know how it is for men, but um, we women, we just respond Pavlovian style to like the heart um, and joy. And again, the getting ready, the sort of hopefulness of what is and what will be, even if it never arrives, it's like, Totally. The purgatory is totally. as sexy as the result. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, let's do like Helm and Newton. Let's do white backdrops, which I think are really good for age and economy. Everyone can see themselves on a white backdrop. I think that's why movie posters are always, especially for romantic comedies, a lot of them... You know, you'll look at the new J-Lo movie, like, yeah. I, I, there's a new, I can't remember the name of it, but it, it's like Second Chance, and yeah. it's her on a white backdrop, like, yeah. white backdrop, Dumb and Dumber was on a white backdrop, you know, it's like, all poster houses and people, they think a white backdrop is, it sells, and I believe as a woman it sells because anyone can picture themselves in that frame. And it's not some unrealistic scenario that they can't picture themselves in. So I just said, let's do timeless. Let's put music in the commercials. They're like, let's make it more dancey. And um, it was just a really good ride. So when it ended, I was like, oh, I feel like I have this college degree and know where to put it. Enter Flower Beauty. But that's really interesting because what you're saying about those images where you were like, okay, every woman needs to be able to relate to it. I think that's been really pivotal because Flower Beauty and CoverGirl, in fact, you've gone into drugstore. You have remained in that market in this very kind of egalitarian, democratic space where you don't need $50 for a lipstick. You can just go get your lipstick for tonight, for your date, for your girls' night, whatever it is. And that democracy, I think kind of feeds into, I mean, you must know, you must know that you're an, your appeal as an actress, as a celebrity, whatever bullshit you want to call it. Um, <laughs> I know, the C word I call it. I know, it. I know, it's awful. <laughs> Which we but all you know, know what a C word means. But you must know that your, your type of celebrity, or your type of appeal, is that women in particular think that you are one of them. Right? So so there are some actresses where it's like Phew. where it's like, ah, you know, and, and it's a different thing. But then I there feel are other the actresses same way too. like say Jennifer Aniston, you there are some actresses where people are just I love like, Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, she's I'm like any movie she's doing, I'm there. I like yeah. her so much. 
And I think it's a real testament to anyone who stands the test of time, too. Like I You didn't... need the girls on side, don't you? Uh, absolutely. I didn't think I would still be here. And look at Jennifer Aniston. Like, what are we talking, 25, 30 years? She's been hustling and we're still as in love with her today as we were when we first met her. But I do think that's a girl thing because if you put all your stock in men, that kind of appeal is so ephemeral. Yeah. So you need the girls on board and so when you launched Flower, was it very important to you to be able to have that every woman appeal in terms of price point, availability? Yeah. I'm just a mass girl too. I Are you? No if ands or, or buts about it. All the movies I want to make, and there's the occasional, like, we'll make a Donnie Darko, sure. or, you know, I'll make a Riding in Cars with Boys, or something that's, like, you know, not so mainstream, um, but I, like, recently I got an opportunity, and they were like, A-list director, A-list actor, it's a drama, it shoots in Boston for six weeks you are getting offered this movie. And I was like, mm -hmm. and they were like, or you can go do this TV show <laughs> yeah. that's super fun and yeah. you can like judge and host and watch fantastical acts. And I was like, I'm going to do that. I think I am, I love drama film too. I love dramatic things. I love, you know, reading A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. The Killing Fields was like my favorite movie as a kid. I love a lot of aspects of drama or the dramatic, and I think some of the most high quality work is there, just like it is in Barney's, just like it is in a $50 lipstick. Yeah. But it isn't who I am or want to do. I want to make commercial movies, I want to make affordable makeup. What I've tried to train myself in is what is the best of the best? And then how do you like how do you take from it? that? How yeah. do you excoriate it, how do you extract, how do you like take that and then make it more accessible because it's not often the older I get that I opt for something heavy. I want light. There's an, and by the way in this day and age there's enough heavy to go around. It's almost like the light you have to fight for it. So I just like fun and optimism. I march in the army of optimism and when anyone says like oh grab your box of tissues to go see that movie. I'm like, then I'm never seeing it because I'm over it. I don't want to have to deal with more heavy than I already have to deal with as we all do in our daily lives. And I think that also I've never wanted to work so hard for two years on a film and have no one see it. I don't want to work yeah, so yeah, yeah. hard yeah. to make a $50 lipstick that most women can't afford and aren't even going into that store. I don't like working and pouring myself into something, not because I want it to be a commercial success or make more money. I'm just like, why are we all working this hard? It's to share, it's to have a communal experience, a collective experience. We all like the idea of connecting with people because if we didn't, social media wouldn't be what it is. We've got the data and the proof right there. We want to feel like we're a part of something. And most people don't want to be a part of something depressing. So tell me or what, expensive. So tell me what that hard work and the pouring into um, for flower looks like because I see a lot of celebrity endorsement Name pages. Slapping. I see yep. all of that stuff. I also have seen behind the scenes how little goes into it 99% yep. of the time. How a celebrities come along, they're shown five samples, they go oh, that one, and then the name is splashed across the packaging. Yeah. So what does your process look like? Because you own the company, right? Or you own a large part of the company. Yeah. So what is your process? I mean, I'm sure... Because you could have done that. Yes. But I feel like that is a short shelf life. Um, I, I mean, I, f I feel like it just doesn't work over time. You know, there is a reason you get longevity and it's because you work really hard at it and for it. It's not a fluke. Um, and I, I also think the harder you work at something, the better the outcome will be. It might, it's going to be as rewarding, maybe not even lucratively speaking, but I think you have to own it and invest in it and put everything into it. I think in the English language, my favorite word is earn. Earn it. Don't expect it. 
things do not come 100%. by fingers crossing and wishing or name slapping and that's it it might skyrocket but you know i mean it, it usually kind of disappears as quickly as it came so we're going into our almost eighth year at flower and it's only growing and getting bigger but at a very small and slow and steady rate but if it had become big right away it might be gone already yeah so I'm like I had a produce I have a producing partner Nancy Devonan who's now Nancy Fallon she met her husband Jimmy Fallon on her movie Fever Pitch and she would always say to me slow and steady wins the race and I really adapted that mentality at 19 and I believed in it and I've tried to live my life by it and um, I just think you know I woke up this morning and I was jet lagged and I was like oh my god oh my god I'm fuck Jesus Christ and I'm looking out the window and I'm like okay here we go here we go like wake up get ready get get into your day and um, I just tell myself like today's gonna be a great day it's gonna be a lot of work um, you're gonna give infinite percent and then you'll get to go be on a couch potato on an airplane and like you'll be so lucky to do that 100% and I just think that nothing comes easy and nothing comes without really working your ass off well certainly nothing worthwhile no I, I mean I've never I've never in 43 years I'm 43. I'm going to be 44. So we're born a day apart. We're going to be 44. I know we're going to be the same age for one day. I know. One minute. One yeah. minute. One minute. Yeah, you're right. Um, are you harassing chemists? Are you Always. saying, I hate this package or this color's wrong or I don't like this formula? Are you on it? Sometimes I'm like, why are we fucking building a custom component and spending extra money when this lab sample is so cute, girls would go crazy for this. Well, we can't have it because it's actually not proprietary to the lab. They're using it from this packaging company over here, and if we use that, it'll actually be more expensive than a custom component. I will formulate, I will choose and help and be a part of the pigment process. We try every single color on every age, ethnicity, skin tone, hair color, eye color, and when it looks across the board great on everyone, I'm like, okay, we're settled. And we sit around with literally the most eclectic group of women, and until the shade looks right on everyone. I've had so many experiences where I'm like, I'm ready to try that opalescent purple lip because I feel like it's on trend and I get home and I'm like, you look fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I want women to open that package and be like, okay, I know it's an exotic color or it's totally traditional, but it's a peach and peaches are really hard to pull off. They usually make you look like you have no lips or they're too yeah, corally. They're too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I believe the majority, 99% of our products are going to truly look good on someone because we've invested the time. But that was like the last stretch that has nothing to do with the lab, the formula, the packaging, the price point, um, trying to even get the buyer to understand or be interested in that product. Fight for what's on trend, which doesn't always translate to sales, and then you kind of eat shit, and you're like, oh God, why was that purple lip on every <laughs> single runway and every yeah. single person, yeah. and yet, for some reason, in that store at that time, there, there was like a discrepancy in you know, information or acceptance, and we fell on our face on that one. But every single detail I care about. I'll literally be like, like why so is me. this flower font so diminutive? Like, we need to, like, <laughs> you know, my father, my children's grandfather, his name is Ari Kobelman, and he uh, is still on the board, but he's the president of Chanel for 25 years. And he would literally take all my stuff when I was first making the makeup. He'd go, why is the name so small? Why is it, I can't see it. Like, have bold, have, and it, it got me so hot and bothered. I'd run back and be like, it's true, the flower name is so small in this. I'm always like, you know, all of those little details and, and the placking or the weightedness of something, you know, just because it's at mass doesn't mean it shouldn't feel no, expensive no. and heavy. Well, but and that costs money. Treat. 
Yeah, she knows. exactly. Whether you spend oh, three dollars on a lipstick, what I would give for tissue and secondary packaging to have the Carrie Bradshaw Manolo Balonic moment. One day I'll get there. Yeah, but you know, it's better for the planet that you don't. Yeah, and really, it's not happening in mass. <laughs> so, is this what you're taking through the airport? Yes, and I was bringing that over to you because. <gasps> By the way, what's this? This has your That's name on it. You. Thanks. What is it? They're masks, masks I make in um, South Korea with an amazing company called Jejun. I tend to take a trip there at least once a year, every two years, to just do a lot of studying. The, yeah, there's a lot of They're the leaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it comes to skincare, I've never in my life found anything more powerful than these masks. Cool. They're amazing. I'm I want to sell them all tonight. over the world. I'm going to do one too. Well, the blue ones, like anti-aging, which I know is like not okay to say, but I'm like, why? Um, and then the green one is a detox and the uh, beige one is a brightening. Are you cool with being in your 40s? I would rather die than go backwards. Same. Same. I'm always forward. I'm still totally fucking figuring it out. Of and course. my kids will say like, are you a grown up? And I'm like, I'm pretending to be one. But, but that's the point, though, isn't it? When we're, when we're young, we assume that adults know what's going on, but actually they don't. I still feel like I'm playing house. Yeah. I still yeah. feel like a kid trying to figure it out. And the only thing I know is that going backwards would mean I know less and exactly. less and less. You'd be less able to cope. You get you, better and, and better wise. and better. And if you have to, like, again, have tits to ankles in order to do it, I'd, I'll just get a better bra. Right. So what do we take through the airport? Um, I'm glad to see you have to properly like weld yours shut. I, mine has never got enough space for me to just like shut it. I know, and then the thing breaks and yeah. then you can't get the widget back on top. I just, the, it's to a classic. me, no one has the mister of this. And if you want to refresh your makeup instead of putting more on, a little spritz just a little wakes it up. Um, I'm going to give you my second book because it's all about the stuff you're talking about. NyQuil. What's this? It's the best sleep aid there is on the mm. planet. And I don't normally take it, but if you're traveling internationally mm. and uh, I, I'm like afraid, I love this little brush. It's the best. And it's great for my kids. Like this is the whole family brush right here in a compact love size. The wet brush. Love that time. wet brush, they nailed it. I used to buy this when it was only sold at Parisian pharmacies, yes. and I used to buy it by the box load and get it stuck in customs, but now it's everywhere. Bioderma. I mean, it is a total classic, but I kind of miss the excitement of arriving at the foreign drugstore. I know. Stock, yeah, it's kind Seeing of, the green cross, yeah, yeah. which now in Los yeah. Angeles is like a weed store, but... In oh, Paris, really? it's a pharmacy, yes. Yeah, no, I miss the excitement of not being able to get stuff. You only really get that in mass now, you know. Because luxury you can buy anywhere in the world, any brand. But mass you can't, which is why when I get to America I go straight to Dwayne Reed or Walgreens or something because this stuff I can't get. Cheap stuff. Yeah. Dwayne Reed is amazing. Love Dwayne Reed. Amazing. They have really nailed the mastige. There was also such a chasm, especially when I started at Copper Girl. I mean, God, this was now 15 years ago. It was like there was prestige and there was mass. And then over these years the chasm is really closed and it's amazing how much like the mass game has stepped up massively completely here too and enclosed here as well mm-hmm um i wore this yesterday so is this your can't be without it, it so this is your own light illusion actually you, with flowers my can't my can't be without is behind you the supernova which this the purple thing this? yeah that's tell me why we can't keep it on the shelves in America. It's completely back ordered for six months. Can I just say, sorry, well, I remember, I'm wearing this today. Isn't it amazing? I'm wearing it. This is a light illusion flower, luminous makeup, nude skin feel. I'm wearing it on my face right now. It looks so good. Your skin Thanks. looks flawless. Thanks. But what I love about your skin is that I'm still getting light reflection. I still feel like I see skin. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But there's amazing coverage. Yeah. It's highly pigmented, but... I, I feel like when we launched Flower Beauty, I was in love with Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. Love that product. Especially the Aluminizer one. Love. It just yes! Get, yes! The best one! It was the best one! Yeah. 
And, um, but then right when we launched Flower became the era of the BB cream. And then also the influencers and the makeup just got heavier and heavier and heavier. And, and much more about the artistry. Very matte. Yep. Very matte kind of clay finish, isn't it? So you want things to look like skin. I want things to have light reflection. Same. Um, illumination does not have to mean lack of coverage. Sure. Do yeah, we? Yeah, because this is actually quite, this is a medium to full coverage. Absolutely. Light. Oh, I even break it down with this. So this is my obsession is you'd think it was glittery or full of mica or greasy. It never moves your foundation. It never moves your concealer. And Are it you just, using that underneath as a primer? I, I, I mix it right in. To thin it out? I mean, you can just literally take it in your hand, do the Pat McGrath for glow. Nice. My makeup will not curdle, coagulate, move. The, it won't fall in the lines. And it never makes me break out. And oils always make me break out. It's not oil. I, I, I'm not kidding. I, I want to understand the science behind it. And I get the sheets of all the ingredients. But I'm not a chemist. I'm not a scientist. I can't necessarily always understand why things work the way they do. I just know that... So you're never without this, right? Never. Not now. Is this the thing? It's it, brand new this, for us. Oh, cool. And it's sold out. It's so fun. And what's interesting Are is... Are we getting that? Yes! Okay, good. I fought for it because we when Superdrug the be put the their order in, this wasn't out yet. So I asked David, who I work with, I said, please, let's show this to them because they wanted to do a thoughtful, curated sort of face yeah. launch. Yeah. And I was like, this is, you know, and we always had a good foundation, but it's funny because now I feel like one of our strongest Super categories is face. skin elixir. And so we had enough left over, thank God, to fulfill their order. But I said, let's launch with this. One thing that's sort of a scary thing when you have a company is our price point is basically $6.99 to $14.99. Like, that is our range. This was going to have to retail for $17.99 in mm -hmm. order to actually mm -hmm. not even make money, but just exist. Yeah. And they were like, that's not who we are. We're not that brand. And I was like, it's not that we have to become that brand, but let's just take this risk. Even if it's this one risk, I'll, I'll fall on my face for it. I'll pay for it out of my own pocket if I have to at the end of the day. I don't know how I would have afforded like that, but because it, it, it can cost a lot of money to a company when you make a giant mistake. Of course. Um, but I said, please, let's take this risk. Please, let's put out a product that's $17.99. It's so worth it. I mean, you've used it. Oh, I'd never not use it. I'm mad for it. And it's, our, it's like one of our best sellers and we can't keep it in stock. So it was a great lesson to me to take risks sometimes and think outside your own box and like say, I know we're this, but it's not that we should become that, but there, there can be the anomaly. You can sort of break precedence from time to if time. If it's worth it, if you think the product's good enough, it's worth taking the hit. I it? do. Are you spot prone? Totally. That's oh, why yeah. I'm obsessed with this foundation yeah. and the skin elixir is because they never make me break out, ever. And I'm very spot prone. So you always carry a salicylic or something with you. And this is, it prevents, it like you get, you're starting to get one, you're like, oh God, it's coming. And you put this on it and you just... Uh, 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 pile it on. I swear to God, within a day or two, it will disappear. This is my life. And they have this whole line, and they have toners yeah. and stuff, but yeah. it's all about this gel. Yes. I'm obsessed. Yes. I think it's just a salicylic. Yeah, it's a good I feel one. naked without it. Do you put it all over? No. No. Um, just, just spot treat. I found it's a bit too drying to put all over. It I think be. that's why they made a toner. That's it less drying, but I don't find that half as effective. You just need to that. literally like take a zit and be like, "Oh yeah, bitch, in your face! <laughs> Fuck you! You're not coming." <laughs> I'm sure Clinique is thrilled <laughs> that I just marketed them that way. However, 
I hope it sells one or two to some ladies because it works. that's exactly what you want to say to a zit when it's coming out. Well, this is what people with zits want to know. Yeah. Like, what's going to tell them to go fuck themselves? You want to just shut the door in their face. So even better And say, eyes. not tonight. I do love this product. I always find that um, there's another uh, eye product I love. Oh, it's in there, the Joara. I nice. find um, that one's like a tea. Joara Miracle Tea Complete Eye Cream, also almost empty. I have yet to find, there's a Mario Badescu, is that how you say it? Yes, his name? the drawing paste. Um, there's an under eye thing. I don't oh, know what okay. it is because I ordered it on Amazon, ripped off the la the label, came off, and now it's just a white tub, and okay. I don't know what it is. Okay. But it's very hydrating, so I feel like it's good for lines, but I always find my dark circles are my battle, and I need... If it's not white or peachy or it doesn't have some coloration, I feel like it doesn't fight my dark circles. Right. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's placebo psychosomatic. You know, can I give you a tip? Please. You know what you need is not skin care though. Um, so, you know your concealer. So, this is what I did yesterday and it works really well. So, yesterday I wore this, but underneath I oh, wore. Oh, highlight! No, underneath I wore a Trish McAvoy Instant Eye Lift, which I wear every day of my life. It is the best. So, it has like a pink, like a salmon pink tint in it, and it has a temporary tightener in it. Mm. And then this goes really nicely over the top and it worked great. Well, I mean, that was the whole Terry de Gunsberg to Chaclat, you yeah, know. Which doesn't work for me, I have to It say. doesn't. Well, I love that she started with, like, her whole thing with makeup was she was so in love with brushes. Yeah, So she I love pioneered yeah. something yeah. to have a brush built into your makeup. And Tusha Cut's, like, one of the great icons of beauty, obviously. That's but like, I like, I like the Trish McAvoy one. It's different, but I like it, and it mixes really well with your concealer. I'm going to try it. I have a lab sample. I don't have it with me. I think I left it in Los Angeles. Um, but it's, like, this bright, like bubble gum, bluey pink <clears throat> with a little mica and shimmer. It works really nicely. Yeah, you want light and color correction. Yeah, one of the girls at our company brought it as like a sample. And it's funny, you can get a bunch of samples, but unless you use them regularly, you don't fall in love. And then six months later, you're like, this thing was actually amazing. Let's go back to that idea and revisit it. Do you still love sitting in the makeup chair? Do you still learn from artists? Or do you like yeah. to close your eyes and chill? Um, I think that I would not be able to have any of the knowledge I have if it wasn't for all the makeup artists. And being interested and asking them, what is it that you like? And I'm not going to name names, but there can be those best in show if you will, and halfway through the day, I'm like, this is falling on my face. And it's so interesting how that's like best in beauty and it's not performing the way that I want it to. Or you fall in love with something and you're like, what is this? I yeah. now have a new sort of benchmark aspiration and goal line that I want to meet. Because being so loyal to my own makeup brand it stops me from buying other makeup. So if it you wasn't... Yeah, you can't. Because you need to get better. You, and well, you always need to get better. And I hate that when people are like, are you wearing your own makeup? I'm like, fuck you, of course I am. What do you think? Uh, like, I'm faking other makeup brands and saying it's flower or I wouldn't wear everything I made. All those things took me months and years to develop. So... I've now fallen in love with them, and now they're like my crutches. I can't live without them. But then all of a sudden, two or three years go by, and you're like, I haven't been experimental enough. No. So it's through a lot of makeup artists and all the things they bring. And a lot of the times, sometimes I'll be like, just what are you into right now? Teach me. Like, show me. And then that, for me, is like going to school. Yeah. So that's key, I think. So you're making this this incredibly accessible, affordable makeup brand, but then you're having, you know, posh luxury makeup put on when you're at work or whatever. Is that your criteria? If I don't in my leisure time want to put this on my face out of choice, then it's not coming in the line. Absolutely. And like, so if there's, if, if you're like, oh, actually, I think I'd prefer to wear this or prefer to wear this, then it's not coming in. Well, also I'll start to like, drive the chemists to arrive at a formula that not only rivals it, but that I'm more addicted to, more yes. in love with. Today, nothing on my face is a flower. 
I mean, these are crisps, but nothing, <laughs> nothing isn't flour. Um, because we're talking about flower beauty, so why would I wear another sure. product? But there are times where I'll do like a red carpet or an event, and that's when I'm like, give me everything you got. Show me everything. What's your new favorite mascara? What's your new favorite foundation? What's your new favorite this? Um, and it just helps keep me fresh and on top of things. Um, I think you have to look at trend reports. I mean, it's like if I was in the food industry, makeup artists would be like the chef rock stars. And I want to try everything Charlotte Tilbury is into. I want to try everything that's going on with Pat McGrath Labs. I want to see every brand that's in Sephora. Why is ColourPop working? Every Instagram I follow are influencers, makeup brands. Why is more freshes coming out of nowhere and becoming the biggest phenomenon ever? It's not, it's is it Jaclyn Hill? Is it Ulta? I want to know, we're in Ulta in, in the United States. I want to know every brand Ulta is working with. I think I just have that, like, remember Tracy Flick in Election, Reese Witherspoon, and <laughs> she's like, Election's one of my favorite It's films. the best movie I ever so made. Much. I read the book just to understand yes, how the movie... It's so great. And if the book is not like the it's movie... It's so great. It's one of my favorite films. It's so brilliant, but I'm like Tracy Flick all night, like, doing the stamps and, like, yeah. making the buttons the and, like, tearing the poster the and the cupcakes. Cake. I've got, like, the African <laughs> crazy psycho music yeah. in my head. Um, but I also feel like if I learn and apply myself and work hard enough, then that will just go into the work and come out the other side as something very relaxed and confident um, and joyful and actually about someone else and has nothing to do with me except for maybe I might be someone trying to display it, explain it or show it or reveal it or advertise it or market it. But I have no, like, kind of staunch harshness, except for on the other side when it comes to what's my responsibility, my homework, the importance of dotting every I, crossing every T, and being OCD. Are you self-critical? Oh, God. I sit there like the Da Vinci Code. I'm like, ooh, ooh every night with a cut of nine tails. You should have done better. Why is this... I mean, this would drive me crazy. I'd be like, why I'm not does, happy with that. I'm not happy with that Why is the either. lid crooked? No, I'm unhappy with that crooked lid. It drives me nuts. I, this, this would make me call everyone and do a running change. And so, when there's a problem, and there's always going to be problems. You can't have 200 SKUs without something getting screwed up. I don't like this either. When I interviewed Pat McGraw last year, she was saying that um, she spent a fortune making sure that every lipstick, whichever way you put the, the lips, lid on, they lined up. The lips those lined lips up. on that yeah. component. But that stuff matters. Well, I love that you're applying that degree of attention to an affordable brand because lots of people don't bother. Like this... This thing drives me nuts, but I do love it because it's like plaque and that costs, you know, five cents a component. That's like a lot of money. But if you put it on the wrong way, and of course now it worked right. Um, I'm going to put it on another way. Yeah, it'll go to the back. And right. I'm like, so do I care about every time I put it on the right way? And yep, see, it didn't happen again. Like, you know, those things will keep me up at night. But, um... I see like a Pat McGrath lip component and I see those lips and the videos she does behind it and it's like I shrivel up inside. I'm like, that is so good. That is so cool. That is so amazing. But then I have to remember. Her how... lipsticks are like 35, 40 pounds. That's how. And, oh, and, she's and in America, genius. twice that. Oh, so, really? Well, I think they're quite. Why, I mean, they're at least 40, 50. I, I can't, I, I shouldn't quote it, but it's, you know, extremely expensive. And I'm like, well, when you have that kind of money you can, going yeah. into something, you can do that. And that's just not who I am and not my brand. That said, I'm so inspired by it. And yes. it makes me work harder. Yeah. I'm never, like, jealous or shit like that. No. It's like, the lesson number one in longevity is... There's enough room for everyone. And if you lift each other up and compliment each other 
and root each other on, you will have your place in the line exactly. too. Exactly, with things like Pat and Charlotte anyway, they're a triumph of talent anyway. So so if somebody has triumphed with extraordinary talent, then it's like And I one worked with the them team. years yeah. ago when they yeah. were makeup artists before they had their lines and I just loved them. Loved them. And I root them on and I learn from them continuously. And although I'm you know, a mass brand and their prestige, I can't help but like continue to learn from them and apply whatever it is they teach me and inspire in me in my own line and in my own way and in my own authentic way. Don't imitate, but be inspired. And there's a huge difference. So before we run out of time, can I do some quick fire? One or the other? Before I run out of my drink. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, uh, vodka or gin? Vodka. Absolutely. Chin's harsh. Yeah, it's horrible. That is some serious shit, man. Yeah. Bath or shower? I'm gonna go with shower since I don't have a bathtub. <laughs> Mascara or concealer? Concealer. Yes. Wrap or disco? I'm gonna go wrap. Interesting. I love disco, um, but I just happen to be becoming the biggest music lover when like Sugar Hill Gang yeah. and that amazing era of rap. And rap when it was more hip hop, more lovey, more slick Rick, Moni Love, BDP. Yeah. Loved Moni Love. Oh, like De La Great, Soul. Um, right, Sugar Hill Gang moment in The Wedding Singer, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, um, serum or moisturizer? Serum. Smoky eye or red lip? Red lip. New York or LA? Just like my bathtub, I gave up LA for New York. Yeah. That's why I only have a shower now. <laughs> Anyone who lives in Manhattan will understand that. Dress or trousers? Pants. And pants. I do love a dress, but I'm much more comfortable in pants. Very, very strong work. That was Drew Barrymore in the bathroom. Thank you so Have much for having Thank me. you so much for having us. I can't oh, wait. I did to be on to your show and your channel. Oh, that was stuff. Thank you so much for having us. You were just as lovely as we thought you would be. Ah, oh, ditto. Thank you right so back much. at you. See you next time. We've got Sharma Dean Reed coming up, and we've got Stacey Solomon coming up. We've just got some really, really, really great people. But um, this was a highlight. Thank you, Drew Barrymore, and thank you for watching too.